Well, I hate admitting defeat, but this thing's just not getting any better. So I'm going to rely on you guys to give me some hints. I've lost interest in it, um, so I'm going to put it on the back burner. Um, I don't want to get rid of it. I think it still might work someday, but so here's what I know. So you guys can chime in. Um, when I replaced the uh, one of the transistors that was missing off of the board, I replaced it and uh, I heard a pop and I don't know where the pop came from. I haven't been able to figure out what it was that popped. Um, when I got the machine, um, this resistor was also missing. And that is the 100 and volt, 150 volt supply to this push-pull drive system. This push-pull drive system uh, controls two grids in the in the tube. It, it, it controls two of these grids, okay? And those grids are controlled with high voltages using these two diode uh, switchers. So um, there's 1.8 kilohertz, uh, kilovolts over here, and then there's a bunch of diode biasing and stuff, and those are referenced down, down through this connector. And so the grounds of these two high voltage sections, w one of them drives one of these grids and the other one drives the other grid. So these are, these are just high voltage sections that you can move up and down a little bit. And you move them up and down a little bit by their ground reference. And the circuit I just showed is their ground reference. And so, and these are in a push-pull configuration, and so they kind of do this thing. So I thought maybe, and this is the Z modulation. This is, and so I thought maybe they were off to the off state, and I needed to put them back onto the on state. I just hasn't been able to get that going. Um, the voltage here is about a hundred and out of this stage, the voltage here is about a hundred and twenty, I think. And the voltage down here is around 30 volts. So it's biased in one direction. And I haven't found a convenient way to bias it the other way. Otherwise, I would try that. And like I said, I've just kind of lost interest. Um, but that was something I would try. So, so what I know is this could be wrong. It could not, it might not be working right. When I replaced this transistor and heard the pop, it might have damaged something else in this circuit because it, it started working again. Um, so that's one theory. The other theory is that the the actual uh, 20 kilovolts or whatever, uh, this 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 big uh, diode doubler uh, that creates that, maybe it's weak and maybe some of that is dead, but not all of it is dead. So uh, I measured about 5,000 volts here, but I wasn't convinced that I wasn't loading it down and, and pulling too much current. And then this thing could only source 5K. Um, and not the full 25k. So I don't know how to test this voltage correctly, but it was low. Um, so it could be the Z biasing. It could be this power supply, or it could be the tube is not right. I don't have any experience with CRTs. I just don't. Um, there seems to be glow. Um, there's, there's good voltage on, on, the, uh, on the filament. There's glow on the filament, so obviously there's... I don't know if it would glow if there was no vacuum, but anyway, uh, I get glow. Um, and uh, I seem to be getting voltage modulations on these things. Um, yeah, so that's what I know. Um, it's a real shame, because I want to get this thing working. Um, but my, uh, what is stick to stick to itiveness, whatever <laughs> is waning. Um, and, uh, I'm just going to have to shelve this for a while, um, and work on some other projects. I've got some good things I want to do and things that are coming in the mail and stuff. So I've just got to put it on the back burner for a while. Um, anyway, um, I'll take this opportunity to 
um, as a teaching moment where I keep saying, repair as many things as you can. Um, so, you know, I say do, right? I say read and I, and I say repair. And um, so in the act of repairing this, I learned a lot. Um, it took a lot of different troubleshooting methods and stuff to get to where I needed to go. Obviously, the skills I had with building power supplies helped me redo this entire section here and get the power supply up and running again, which is the, the biggest disaster there. Uh, I was able to troubleshoot and, and see that the front end is working, the horizontal sweep is working. You know, everything seems to be working on it, um, except I'm not getting a trace. Uh, I just can't get a trace. Um, but... Um, did that, did that mean that I, I wasted my money? I paid $25 for this thing, right? So no, I didn't, I didn't waste my money. I got so much education for my $25. I got a lot of enjoyment for my $25. There's this really weird, um, thing that I found is that you get super excited and it's just super, super fun. And then if you can actually repair it, it's just, you know, that's just ex super exciting. But if you can't complete it, then don't feel like you failed. Um, feel like you're just not there yet. You just, you're just not there yet. Either it's unrepairable, so it's not your fault at all. You don't have the skill set yet necessary to fix it. You just haven't found that little nugget yet, right? It's like rock climbing. It's like, you know, the first time you climb a really hard route, you might fall off of it the first time, right? And you need to keep coming back and you need to practice the moves and you finally figure out, you know, oh, here's the sequence of moves that I need. And, or maybe your finger strength wasn't enough and you needed to go exercise, right? So, you know, don't feel like you've failed. Um, um, <laughs> on the other flip side of that, I've heard the term fail and fail often. Um, and I think that's a great way of looking at it also. Um, if you don't fail, you're not pushing yourself. So fail and fail often. And the more failures you get, the more successes you'll have, right? So uh, yeah, um, like I said, back burner, give me some comments below. Maybe you guys have a better idea um, of how to deal with these CRTs. <laughs> They're kind of scary. Um, 